Hello, Vanguard community. It's Monday, April the 20th, 2020. I'm Jennifer Methvin, the Chancellor of ASUBB, and this is Doing Things Differently, Learning Something New. If you've been following us, you know I'm just holding a few casual conversations with faculty, staff, and students about the way that the current public health crisis is impacting our work, how we study, how we learn, and how we live. And I have with me today one of our faculty members from the Heber Springs campus, Carol Hartsfield. Carol, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Carol Hartsfield, as Dr. Methvin said, and I am an education instructor and a psychology instructor on the Heber Springs campus that I also teach a lot of classes online. Um, I spent 23 years in the public school system as an elementary teacher and a principal and a high school counselor. And, those were really some really good years and, and that helped me to be prepared for this position at ASU, which I've really enjoyed doing. Yeah, you know, our education program, it, it's a pretty important part of our curriculum. It helps us help our local communities um, grow their own teaching talent within the community. And that's, that's so important. Right. So thank you for that work. Well, I think you know, uh, we have been doing <laughs> alternative methods of instruction since uh, March 16th. So um, several weeks now. What's been the most challenging or difficult part to you as an education faculty member in, in delivering your content to our students? Well, right from the beginning, the first thing that I thought of is how are we going to finish our field one experience and uh, our observations. My intro to teaching class has to get 30 hours of observation in a public school system. So when the school started closing down, I, my mindset was, okay, well, I'm just going to extend their due date, you know, and then that turned into we're closed for the rest of the school year. So uh, the other education instructors and myself, we have worked in coordination with uh, A-State Jonesboro and we've come up with some really good classroom videos that is just, you know, the teachers instructing. And so the students are able to get their observation hours in by watching videos. YouTube has become our best friend. <laughs> So um, that plus we have uh, put in some alternate assignments because they were supposed to do service activities and um, I've referred to some uh, the CDC website for some uh, really good tools on um, how to work with children and get them through this trying time and keep as much structure as possible and that has become a part of the lessons that we've incorporated for our students. Yeah, that sounds like some exciting things. You know, health professions faculty talk about, and I, this hadn't dawned on me until you said this, they talk mm -hmm. about how with simulation these days, you get to create some um, situations that a student might not see in their clinical rotations and that it actually has really enhanced those kinds mm -hmm. of experiences. This could be the same, you know, um, watching some really good and or maybe really bad um, <laughs> classroom examples um, is a pretty good enhancement to the process, I think. Yeah, it is. They learn from the, the bad also of things not to do. So um, we, we worry about them missing out on the classroom management side of it, things that you see in the raw when you're you know, actually in the classroom that they wouldn't put on a video. <laughs> uh, we have incorporated some classroom management videos also. Yeah, very good. Well, very good. So adapting, right? Um, adapting yeah. in these in these interesting times. Yeah. Um, so do you think there's anything else um, that we're learning through this process that will, will make us better faculty members, better student supporters, um, a better college on the other side of this? Yes, I do. I, I feel like um, myself, personally, I learned how to use Screencast-O-Matic and have dual screens so I could show my students how to create their Google site professional portfolio and I've learned how to set up my advising sessions on Zoom and, and work through that. Um, I, I've just found a lot of really good technological tools that now I can share with my students to use in their future classroom. Um, but mainly I've learned 
how to rely on our colleagues where we can all put our heads together to figure out how to get through this. Yes, uh, there's a little irony in this situation, I think, where we have some colleagues who aren't normally working together who have worked together because of this situation. And we may, uh, while we're separately and in remote places, we may be uh, being in contact with one another even more than we have. I think so. We had a early childhood education advisory council meeting by Zoom this morning. And, you know, I said, we should have been doing this all along. <laughs> Well, I said the same thing about our campus forums. I probably should start doing some campus forums by Zoom because we were all together all at one time um, mm -hmm. hearing the same thing. And so I think that's, that was important. Well, what about personally? You know, we all, our, our, our work and our home have sort of um, become one thing. What's been personally challenging for you um, in this situation? I just have to say the thing that has bothered me the most and it's the Mimi in me. I don't get to spend time with my grandchildren. And it's, it, that has been devastating to me because um, my nine month old is starting to walk and I'm missing that. And um, my three year old is saying, Mimi, please come and play with me. So it's been very difficult at Easter. I put on my gloves and sanitized all the plastic Easter eggs and hit them all over the yard and then watched from a distance. So personally, that's been hard for me and just my, my parents trying to stay away from them so I don't, you know, expose them to anything. And um, also I miss, you know, congregating with my church family. Yeah, yeah these are all uh, very common challenges for us all, our students as well. Yeah. Well, okay. It's only fair. I, I, I let whoever um, was gracious enough to have this conversation with me also ask me a question. So what's your question? Okay, Dr. Methman, how do you think that the coronavirus uh, will continue to be a part of our lives as we move forward? You know, I've thought about this a lot because I think about um, uh, my mother's mother, who had so many habits that we would all say, well, that's because she lived through the depression. That's because she lived, you know, so her, her uh, storage building full of butter bowls and that you had to wash the block bags and Dixie cups and all those things, we'd say it's because she lived um, through the depression. But I think there is a lot to that. I think mm -hmm. we will all act differently <laughs> going forward. I've been thinking about handshaking. I don't know that that we'll ever do that the same and that we they probably need to come up with a new way of greeting people and you know there are cultures that have very nice greetings that aren't touch but are very eye to eye where you acknowledge the person look them in the eye and some gesture but you don't um, touch the person I, I think that's probably worth our thinking through um, in the business world um, doing those things differently I think we'll always have germex and wipes and <laughs> all that in our common <laughs> common student spaces from now on right we got caught a little bit short supply and had to hustle um to get some of those things in place i think they'll always be in place um probably um from now on um i also think i can't figure out what i think about it but i also think we're going to work differently um, um we found out that folks can be very very uh, productive even remotely <laughs> in fact um, I think we're as you said we're learning to use so many tools that are that are um, giving us some efficiency that I've been saying this I don't know exactly what I mean by this yet but I'm gonna write about it when I figure it out I think we're gonna value the work and what gets done over the time the you know eight hours at your station or whatever particularly in professions like ours in in higher education um what that looks like and what that means i don't know um mm -hmm. but um i think we're picking up some habits and learning some things that we wouldn't have otherwise um if we hadn't been made to and so um i think it's going to impact almost every facet of our of our lives and i'm really interested to see um what that is. It's one of the reasons we're doing these conversations. So, um, I'm that kind of researcher. I like to think through um, the impact of things. And so um, it'll be interesting. I do appreciate that. I, I feel like you're able to be just as productive, you know, um, 
I seem to get more done when I'm working from home than I do in my office. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, uh, it's just been a different, a, a, a sort of difference that we'll, that we'll figure out the balance of, I think. But I think it will never work the same. I know that. It will probably never, ever work the same. Um, or there are probably, I'm sitting in State Hall right now, actually, at my office. Um, I only come in, come into my space, clean my space, work in my space, and leave. And there are about four of us who do that pretty regularly, and a few others who have to come in and out. And we're zooming up and down the hall, you know. <laughs> we're just a few doors down from one another, but we're still doing this um, conversation by Zoom. So um, I, it'll, I'll be interested to see um, what we choose to keep doing in the ways um, that we've had to the last little bit. Yes. All right. We'll always end with this question because, um, you know, I've asked us, what can we learn? This is very stressful. This is very different. But um, when you go through something, see what you can learn. Um, so what's the silver lining in all of this for you, for your family, for our students, for our state, for our nation? Are there any silver linings? Oh, I think there's a lot of silver linings that will come out of it every trial that we go through you know we learn from um that's what makes a good educator you know if they look back at, at a lesson that was taught and uh think about what worked and what didn't and how we can fix things um i think as an education department at asu that what we're going to gain from all of this is learning teamwork and to rely on each of us to put different pieces together that we that is our talent you know that we're good at but i think that is the same that you know on an asu university wide basis we've leaned on those that you know whatever their talents are that they possess and work together as a team and it's the same state and um, worldwide you know, we're looking toward the experts. There's no one person that knows how to handle these uncharted waters that, that we're having to, to go through. And then I just believe that we're gonna come out stronger individuals when we're finished with this. Um, and we're going to learn to work together better and that um, it takes all of us to, to get through it. Yeah, I think that's a great silver lining. Um, and maybe particularly at this point in history, it's a pretty good silver lining for us to have. Um, uh, respect for and an dependence upon one another in our areas of expertise. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut and we just feel like, you know, we're just gonna do our own thing and get through this life. And this has made us rely on others more. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good silver lining. Well, Carol, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, thank you for all that you're doing. And I know many of you are making a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails to not just your students in your classes, but students who need to register for summer and register for fall. And I know you're fielding questions from students all day long, every day. Um, they feel an uncertainty just like we do and, and are constantly seeking information. So thank you for all that you're doing and thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you so much. Nice and, thank, and thank you to everyone who's been following our series. Um, up next will be faculty member Sean Taylon. He um, is a faculty member in our John Deere um, Agricultural Equipment Technology Program. Um, and so you'll be interested to learn, I think, about how um, that program is adapting um, in this uh, coronavirus situation as well. Um, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.